In this video, we are going to discuss and demonstrate a practical attack against block ciphers operating in electronic codebook or ECB mode. As we have seen in detail in a previous video, go ahead and check that out now if you haven't already, ECB is the most basic and easiest to understand block cipher mode of operation. A block of plain text encrypted with the same key will always result in the same block of ciphertext. The order of the blocks doesn't matter. Same plain text and key, same ciphertext block. It doesn't matter if you encrypt it once, twice or a thousand times. The output will always be the same. So what exactly can go wrong when the same plain text blocks map to the same predictable ciphertext blocks? Let's find out. But before we do, the purpose of these videos is to explain theory for a specific security topic. Once you understand the theory, you'll be able to solve relevant capture the flag problems. One of the places you can solve these problems is 247ctf.com. At the end of this video, a 247ctf challenge will be referenced, which will enable you to test your practical understanding of this topic. Due to the way ECB mode works, the ciphertext lack diffusion. That is, there is a clear relationship between the input plain text and the output ciphertext. If we encrypt the word memes with the key dank in ECB mode, the output ciphertext is always going to be the same, no matter how many times we perform the encryption process. There is a clear correlation between the plain text and the ciphertext. We can demonstrate this concept visually by encrypting an image and comparing the encrypted output. Let's take this image of the 247 CTF logo. If we put on our block cipher cryptography hats, you could think about an image as a series of individual pixel blocks, where each block needs to be encrypted. Specifically, in our case, encrypted in ECB mode. So what happens when we perform this encryption? The output of the 247 CTF logo, encrypted in ECB mode, looks like this. We can clearly see the lack of diffusion in the output, right? The input image input blocks, which were the same, have resulted in output image blocks which are also the same. This makes sense in ECB mode, right? Each individual pixel of the image has been encrypted, but even though it's encrypted, the original underlying image is still relatively easy to identify. The coloured patterns in the input remain. The encrypted representation has just changed what that pattern looks like. This example demonstrates that inherent weakness of ECB which other symmetric block cipher modes such as CBC, again, take a look at that previous video if you haven't already, don't suffer from when used correctly. It's also somewhat in the name, right? Electronic codebook. Same input, same key. Results in a predictable output which can be mapped as a codebook or lookup table. If you know the plain texts and you've seen the cipher text, you don't need to re-perform the encryption again. You already know what the output will look like. You can just search for the encrypted representation in your lookup table. This is exactly what happened as part of the Adobe password leak back in 2013. Due to the lack of diffusion, the leaked passwords basically created a giant crossword puzzle. If you could figure out the plain text for a specific block, you knew the plain text for every other instance of that block in the encrypted password leak. This same process always works in ECB mode. Once you have a codebook of known plain text, you can start looking up ciphertext blocks in your table. Another nice side effect is you also have an idea about password length. More blocks means longer passwords. Less blocks means shorter passwords. This inherent weakness results in a number of potential vulnerabilities, depending on the purpose and usage of the cryptography. That is, an attacker could identify if two ECB encrypted messages are the same, Identify if two ECB encrypted messages contain similar substrings as long as they are block aligned. Identify whether there is any repeated data in a message, which we could easily see in our encrypted 247CTF logo for example. Create fake ciphertext due to the independent encryption and decryption process performed on blocks in ECB mode. That is, the blocks don't rely on each other and as long as you have the padding right, the order of the blocks doesn't matter either. So these are the theoretical weaknesses, but what does that have to do with a CTF? Well, let's talk about an example challenge, which demonstrates how you could abuse an ECB mode implementation. You have an application which will encrypt any arbitrary plain text and provide you with the ciphertext. If you can create a ciphertext for the plain text dank meme machine, you'll be rewarded with a flag. Sounds easy, right? However, there is a little trick. 
The application doesn't allow you to directly encrypt the plain text dank meme machine. If you try to encrypt this exact plain text, the application will complain. So how can we solve this? Well, due to the properties of ECB mode, we can solve this by forging a ciphertext after first building up a codebook. But how do we create this codebook exactly? Let's start with the first step. Without running the code and by forgetting how to use Google, how can we blindly figure out the size of the block used by this application? Due to the properties of a block cipher, the length of the output ciphertext is based on the length of the input plaintext. So we can just start with a single character plaintext and take a look at the size of the output ciphertext. By sending a plaintext of A, we can see that we have an output ciphertext of length 16. This is probably the size of the block, but depending on what exactly is being done to create the ciphertext, we can verify this just to be sure. Let's incrementally send more letters of the alphabet as plain texts. So AB, then ABC, and so on, increasing the length of the input plain text each time until the length of the output ciphertext changes. Once the length of the output changes, we know we have reached the maximum size of a single block. We know this because a second block is now required to represent the output ciphertext. Okay, so after sending a plain text of length 16, the length of the output ciphertext changes. If we subtract the differences in the lengths of the output, we know that we have found the block size, which in this case is 16. But what is being encrypted here exactly? This output is comprised of two blocks. The first block contains the encrypted representation of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And the second block contains 16 bytes of the number 16 for padding. I'm a broken record at this point, but take a look at the previous video if this padding stuff sounds like black magic. If we add another character P to our input, the first block doesn't change because it still contains the same data. After all, we are using ECB, remember? But the second block does change because now the second block contains P and 15 bytes of the number 15 for padding. We can also test this out and see our codebook mapping in action. Ignoring the padding block, if we send two input blocks of the same alphabet block align plain text, we get two output blocks of the exact same block align ciphertext. Okay, great. But how can we use this to solve the challenge? Well, let's think about what we need to do to get that flag. To solve the challenge, we want a ciphertext which is two blocks long, because Dank Me Machine is 17 bytes long, which we know is larger than a single 16 byte block. The first block should contain the first 16 bytes of Dank Me Machine without the E, and the second block should contain that trailing E along with 15 bytes of padding and nothing else. The application won't let us create this ciphertext in one go, but we can create these individual ciphertext blocks to build up our codebook. Then, thanks to the properties of ECB, we can just combine these individual ciphertext blocks and solve this challenge. Why can we combine them again? Well, since the cipher operates in ECB mode, the order of the blocks doesn't matter. As long as the padding in the final block is correct, ECB will happily decrypt the blocks in any order. So to solve this challenge, we create our first ciphertext block. Next, we create our second ciphertext block. So now we have both pieces of our ciphertext puzzle and we just need to combine them together. Take our first ciphertext block, then add our second ciphertext block and we have created our forged ciphertext. Now, we just need to submit the combined ciphertext to the application and we receive our flag. Awesome. We just broke a cryptographic implementation due to the design decision made to utilize a symmetric block cipher in ECB mode. If you learned something here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future security capture the flag walkthroughs and videos. Also, at the 247 CTF, you can practice this theory yourself. The challenge, the impossible user in the cryptography category, will reward you with a flag if you can solve a symmetric block cipher challenge in ECB mode. If you have any thoughts on this topic or requests for future videos in this Capture the Flag fundamental series, be sure to let me know in the comments section below.